However, because the people of that time were fundamentally aware that women's blood are impure, this sutra came to be widely believed. Thus, the idea developed that women themselves are impure, regardless of their blood. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. In 2018, an incident occurred during a sumo match that caused a major problem. A woman came into the sumo ring to give emergency aid to a mayor who had collapsed in the middle of his speech. Immediately after this, an announcement was made telling her to get off the ring right away and have a man perform it instead. Where the woman stood on the ring was later purified with salt. In the end, the mayor did survive. But there was a flood of criticism against the Sumo Association for its clearly inappropriate response to a life-threatening situation. Sumo wrestling was originally a Shinto ritual, and for this reason, there is a tradition that women are not allowed in the ring, which is an area to worship the gods. But why? It is because it is believed that women have kegare, which means impurity and dirtiness due to their periods and blood. In one of my past videos, I have also mentioned that mothers were not able to visit shrines after giving birth to babies. Kegare is defined as a state of impurity that is considered abhorrent and a state of being avoided because it is believed to bring harm to the community. Why did the idea of woman's blood is impure spread in Japan? So today, I will explain how women have been treated in Japan because of the idea that their blood is impure and about the root of this idea itself. Before we get started, I want to make the following three things very clear. One, it is difficult to translate the word kegare because it is a word unique to Japanese. Two, since kegare is a very vague concept, please understand that today's content is just one of the many theories that I've studied. Three, I believe this kind of discrimination must never be tolerated, even if it's a tradition. Women's periods are a physiological phenomenon necessary to nurture the lives of the next generation and should never be a reason for discrimination. Furthermore, childbirth is an act of a woman risking her own life to give birth to a baby. And I strongly believe that all of humanity should be grateful to all mothers in this world. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go to the First of all, let's take a look at the history of how women were treated due to the belief that their blood is impure. These are the three main things that are often brought up. One, have them live in a cabin during periods and childbirth. Two, prohibiting visits to Shinto shrines during periods and after childbirth. Three, prohibiting climbing mountains. The tradition of women having to live in a separate cabin during their periods and childbirth is said to have started around the 9th century. At that time, it was considered good to stay inside for about seven days, both for periods and after childbirth. However, in the 12th century, the period of isolation extended to 30 days after childbirth, and in the 16th century, the period extended even more to 90 days after childbirth. During this period, not only were women hardly able to meet anyone, but access to places considered sacred, such as Shinto shrines, was forbidden. They were not even allowed to use the same water and fire as family members because the women's kegare could spread to others. There are some documents left about women having to hide their face completely with a stray hat when moving into the cabin, forced to eat outside in the coldest time of winter because of periods, and having to carry the straw and other materials used for the childbirth on her own back and bury them in the ground just after 24 days of giving birth to a child. What's even more shocking is that these cabins existed until the 1970s, which was around a time when my mother was already born. 
in some regions where there weren't any separate cabins. They would create some isolated space within the house using folding screens. Lastly, women were forbidden to climb mountains, regardless of whether they were on their periods or after childbirth. Mountains have been worshipped since ancient times as where the gods reside, and in principle, only Buddhists who practice mountain training were allowed to enter the mountains. This is why there are so many temples and shrines built in front of the mountains to worship them. Matsuo Taisha Shrine, which our family visited to celebrate the Hichigo-san children's celebration, is exactly such a shrine. Coming into the Meiji period, women gradually became allowed to climb mountains due to modernization. But there are still some mountains, even today, where women are not allowed to enter. Now that you've understood how women were treated in the past, let's next talk about how this concept was fundamentally born in Japan in the first place. Again, there is no absolute answer, but I'd like to introduce the three that I found through my studying. One, the teachings of Shintoism and Buddhism. Two, transition to a male-dominated society. Three, spread of the Ketsubonkyo. One, the teachings of Shintoism and Buddhism. In Shintoism, the ancient indigenous religion of Japan, death was considered to be the greatest of all kegare impurities. Even today, in the year of a relative's death, people avoid visiting shrines for New Year's prayers and do not set up the New Year's decorations either. This is to prevent the impurity of death from spreading to others. It is believed that the idea may have spread in combination with Buddhism that was introduced from China and Korea in the 6th century, which believed that childbirth and women's menstrual blood are impure because it can be associated with death. In fact, ancient Japan was a mother-based society where most of the female priests were married. Menstrual blood was considered to be sacred blood from the gods, which was rather a requirement to be a female priest. If women were believed to be impure from ancient times, the fact that the supreme deity Amaterasu, who appears in Japan's oldest myth, Kojiki, being a goddess, would leave questions. Again, the traditions of women having to isolate themselves in cabins started in the 9th century, which was about 300 years after Buddhism was introduced, and about 100 years after Kojiki was written. 2. Transition to a male-dominated society There were more than hundreds of small countries in ancient Japan, and the first administration to unify them is said to have emerged around the 3rd to 4th century. The leaders of this government are the ancestors of the imperial family that still exist in Japan today, and they were seeking a way to unify Japan at that time. The best method they found was Buddhism, that they imported in the year 538. During a journey of Buddhism starting in India and traveling through China and Korea, it not only became a religion, but also a system for leaders to promote the centralization of power. In other words, Buddhism had all the systems of thought, belief management, and ceremonies that Shintoism lacked. Thus, around the 9th century, the mother-based society that has continued from ancient times came to an end, and the social structure shifted to a father-based system, in line with Buddhism and the Chinese political system. From around the 12th century, Buddhism, which had previously been limited to the aristocrats, increased the number of its sects and came to be worshipped by the commoners too. The sects were originally born to help the low-ranked people who were suffering from wars and famines caused by samurai who were gaining power at that time. But it is said that this accelerated the transition to a male-dominated society. It is said that men utilized the idea that women were impure and lower their status in order to keep their authority absolute. 3. The Spread of Kitsubonkyo the consciousness of women's impurity towards blood that grew up in this way was further intensified by the spread of Ketsubonkyo, a sutra that came from China during the Muromachi and Edo periods. During periods in childbirth, women pollute the earth and water gods with their blood and thus fall into the hell of the pool of blood and cannot reach enlightenment. 
However, if the woman believes in this sutra, she will be saved. From our present point of view, it's difficult to understand how they came to this conclusion. However, because the people at that time were fundamentally aware that women's blood are impure, this sutra came to be widely believed. Thus, the idea developed that women themselves are impure, regardless of their blood. As I explained earlier, when Japan modernized and westernized during the Meiji period, discrimination against women were eliminated as a formality only. This was in order to not show a prehistoric aspect to other countries. However, ideas that have lasted for more than a thousand years do not disappear that easily. Cabins for isolating women are said to have existed until the 1970s, and only four years ago, the sumo industry caused discriminatory incident against women. As I explained in a past video, Japan's gender equality ranking is one of the lowest in the world. But this is probably fundamentally due to the influence of this ideology in Japan. It is understandable that in the past, when women's periods in childbirth could not be explained scientifically, people could have had ideas of fear. But now, clearly, all Japanese people should understand what it is about. While I understand the importance of preserving traditional culture, I believe that traditions that discriminate or hurt anyone should be eliminated and changed immediately. This is because any culture that should be protected is a culture that makes people today happy. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Women were discriminated against in ancient Japan from the belief that they were impure because of the blood from their period in childbirth, which could be associated with death. One, have them live in a cabin during periods and childbirth. Two, prohibiting visits to Shinto shrines during periods and after childbirth. Three, prohibiting climbing mountains. These traditions started from the 9th century and gradually intensified as Buddhism spread throughout Japan and the transition to men-dominated society began. When the Ketsubonkyo was introduced during the Romachi and Edo periods, the discriminatory views grew stronger, and eventually women regardless of blood began to be believed as impure. While I understand the importance of preserving traditions, I believe that traditions that discriminate or hurt anyone should be eliminated and changed immediately. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards history and religions in Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub-channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita.